Many singer-songwriters came out of the folk era. Many of them were inspired by the Kingston Trio. And that's definitely true of the artist that we're going to rediscover in this episode. He recorded nine studio albums and 11 live albums. And he hit his peak in 1969. And unfortunately, he was dead by 1975. So let's say goodbye and hello to Tim Buckley. Let's drop the needle. Tim Buckley taught himself to play banjo when he was 13. And then he formed a folk group with some friends that was modeled after the Kingston Trio. Like many young artists at that time, his musical taste started to grow outside of the folk area. And he joined two bands while he was in high school. By 1965, Tim Buckley was appearing in clubs around Southern California and was a regular at one of my favorite places, the Troubadour. By 1966, he had got a recording contract with Electra Records, and he releases his first album, which is called Tim Buckley. Some songs to check out are Song of the Magician, Aren't You the Girl, Grief in My Soul, and Understand Your Man. In 1967, he releases his second album, one that I really like a lot, which is Goodbye and Hello. And you can really tell that his skill and talents have increased dramatically since the first album. Songs include No Man Can Find the War, Pleasant Street, I Never Asked to Be Your Mountain, Goodbye and Hello, and Morning Glory, which a couple years later, the new group Blood, Sweat, and Tears with Al Cooper released their first album, and it had Morning Glory on it as well. In 1969, Tim releases an album called Happy Sad. And if you pair Happy Sad with his previous album, Goodbye and Hello, those two albums are probably a great introduction to what the music of Tim Buckley is all about. Now, Happy Sad was produced by a couple of interesting people, and both of them have ties to the Love and Spoonful. It was produced by Zalman Yavanovsky, and then Jerry Yester. And if you remember, Jerry Yester replaced Zalman when Zalman left the Spoonful. The song Buzz and Fly was written while Buckley was still in high school, and he even performed it way back then. Then there is the 10 and a half minute Love from Room 109 at the Islander on Pacific Coast Highway. He's really into long songs. Also check out the 12 minute Gypsy Woman and the closing song, Sing a Song for You. This would be Tim Buckley's highest charting album, hitting number 81. Then Tim Buckley befriended Frank Zappa. And so Tim's next album, Blue Afternoon, comes out on Zappa's straight record label. Again, Buckley stretches out. I like Happy Time, I Must Have Been Blind, The River, So Lonely, and Blue Melody. In 1970, he releases two albums. The first one is called Lorca, and although it was recorded just about a month after his last album, Blue Afternoon, the two albums couldn't be more different. I like the title song Lorca, and I had a talk with my woman. Then for his next album, which is called Star Sailor, he decides to go really, really into the avant-garde elements in his music. The album contains one song that is Buckley's best known, and that is Song to the Siren. Besides that, I like the title song, Star Sailor, Monterey, Jungle Fire, and Down by the Borderline. Next up comes a period that Wikipedia refers to as Buckley's sex funk period. He releases three albums and the subject matter is rather sexual. The albums are Greetings from L.A., Surfornia, and Look at the Fool, but none of them really sell well. Tim announces that he's making a comeback album and is going to go on an extensive tour, but sadly, neither of those things happen. Because on June 29, 1975, Tim Buckley dies of an overdose. Tim Buckley had one son, Jeff Buckley. But Jeff claims he never saw his father until he was eight years old. Nonetheless, although estranged, Jeff followed his dad in pursuing a music career. But he only recorded one studio album called Grace in 1994. It didn't sell well, but now critics are acclaiming it. Jeff Buckley went on a worldwide tour to support it. And then in 1997, he relocated to Memphis, Tennessee to record a second album. 
As he was working on that, one evening he decided to go swimming in the Mississippi River, and he drowned. Jeff Buckley was 30 years old, two years older than when his father, Tim Buckley, died at 28. Now, as usual, I've created a Spotify playlist that will contain some of Tim Buckley's music if you want to check it out. Tim Buckley had an interesting career, and as I said before, I particularly like the albums Goodbye and Hello and Happy Sad. If you have any Tim Buckley stories, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep a rockin'. If you like this episode, hit the like button, and you can also leave me a comment down below, and I'll respond to you. If you subscribe, we'll let you know when future episodes come out.